All right, today we're gonna dive into something that's a silent struggle for millions of people, alcoholic liver disease. It's often really misunderstood, so we're gonna break down exactly what's going on, how it happens, and maybe most importantly, what the path to recovery looks like. So let's just get right into it with a pretty stark fact. Alcoholic liver disease, or ALD, isn't some rare, obscure condition. No, it's a huge global health issue and one of the main reasons people die from liver-related causes. And that's exactly why getting a handle on the mechanics behind it is so, so important. So here's our game plan for this explainer. We'll start with the liver's silent struggle and figure out who is most at risk. Then we'll get into the actual science of how alcohol becomes a toxin in the body. After that, we'll walk through the three main stages of damage and then explore what recovery looks like. And we'll wrap up with the single most critical factor, the choice to stop drinking. Okay, so first things first, what are we actually talking about when we say alcoholic liver disease? You know, ALD isn't just one thing. It's better to think of it as a spectrum of damage, a whole range of injuries to the liver that are directly caused by drinking way too much alcohol over a long time. It's like a journey the liver is forced to take, and each step gets progressively more dangerous. And this journey has three main stages, though sometimes they can overlap. It all kicks off with fatty liver. From there, it can progress to a much more dangerous phase called alcoholic hepatitis. And in the worst cases, it ends in what's called cirrhosis, which is basically irreversible scarring. We're gonna break down each of these in just a bit. So that brings up a really important question. Who's actually most vulnerable here? Because the risk isn't the same for everyone, and some of the factors might actually surprise you. And wow, when you look at the numbers here, you see a huge difference. For men, the high-risk zone really starts when they're consuming over 60 to 80 grams of ethanol a day for more than a decade. But look at the numbers for women. That threshold is way lower, only 20 to 40 grams. Why? Well, it mostly comes down to differences in metabolism and body composition, which actually makes women more susceptible to liver damage from the exact same amount of alcohol. But listen, it's not just about how much you drink every day. Your own genetics play a huge part, and so do drinking patterns, like binge drinking. On top of that, other health conditions like obesity or having an infection like hepatitis B or C can act like accelerators, just pouring gasoline on the fire and dramatically speeding up the damage. It's a really complex mix of your lifestyle, your genes, and your overall health. Okay, so we've got the what and the who, but what about the how? How does alcohol, you know, a simple molecule, manage to cause so much chaos in one of the body's most important organs? Let's get into the science. So here's a peek inside your liver. As it's working hard to break down alcohol, it creates this nasty byproduct called acetaldehyde. You could think of it like a toxic sludge that just gums up the works and damages your liver cells from the inside out. And at the same time, another process gets kicked into overdrive, creating all these unstable molecules that cause even more damage through something called oxidative stress. It's really like a two-pronged attack on the liver. And all of that, it just kicks off this nasty chain reaction. The toxicity leads to inflammation, it messes up how the liver processes fat, so it starts building up inside the cells. And over time, all that constant damage just leads to permanent scarring. All right, so let's zoom in and see how all this damage actually plays out over time. We're gonna take a closer look at those three stages we talked about and see how that toxic transformation really takes hold. This table really lays it all out. Stage one, fatty liver, is pretty much what it sounds like. Fat builds up in the liver cells. The tricky part is it's often completely silent with zero symptoms. Now, stage two, alcoholic hepatitis. This is where things get really serious. We're talking widespread inflammation, liver cells are dying, and you start to see symptoms like jaundice, fever, and pain. And then you have stage three, cirrhosis, which is the end game. The liver is so scarred that it's permanently damaged, and that leads to some severe complications like fluid buildup, confusion, and even internal bleeding. But hold on because this next part is maybe the most important thing to hear today. That first stage, fatty liver, which by the way, affects almost every single heavy drinker, is completely, 100% reversible. If you stop drinking, the liver can heal itself in as little as two to six weeks. That is an absolutely critical window of opportunity. Okay, so that naturally leads us to the path to recovery. I mean, given how serious this disease can get, how do doctors figure it out and what can actually be done? 
Figuring out if someone has ALD is kinda like being a detective. It all starts with a very detailed conversation about their alcohol use. That's followed by a physical exam, blood tests. For instance, there are specific liver enzymes that get elevated in a very particular ratio that points right at alcohol as the culprit. Imaging can give us a picture of the liver, but really, the gold standard is a liver biopsy, where they take a tiny little piece of tissue to see the damage up close under a microscope. But no matter what stint we're talking about or what specific treatments are being used, there is one thing that is absolutely non-negotiable. The cornerstone, the single most powerful intervention for managing ALD is complete and lifelong abstinence from alcohol. Everything else comes second. And that brings us to our last and honestly most critical point, the unbelievable power of abstinence. I mean, just how much of a difference does quitting actually make? Just look at these numbers. They pretty much speak for themselves. We're looking at patients who have already reached cirrhosis, the most advanced stage. If they stop drinking completely, their five-year survival rate is about 90%. 90! If they keep drinking, that survival rate plummets to around 60%. That is a massive difference. Even at the final stage, quitting alcohol can literally change everything. So the takeaway here is crystal clear. From the very first reversible signs of fatty liver all the way to the complexities of end-stage cirrhosis, stopping drinking is the most powerful tool there is for improving health and, frankly, for extending life. It is the number one factor, period. So when you step back and look at the whole picture, the story of ALD is one of terrible damage, yes, but it's also an incredible story of resilience. The fact that the liver, our liver, can bounce back from the brink, even after years of harm, is just remarkable. It really shows you that even when things seem dire, the power to change the outcome is often still right there, within our grasp.